welcome back viewers, it's James Come to get on the bike. Welcome you all back for another half ass production and today we're at the Whitney Museum. And we're going to drop in and make a quick run through of the 2012 Whitney Biennial. Well, I may be wrong, but I think this is going to be the last Whitney Biennial that's in this building. I don't know what their schedule is, but I know they're opening the new Whitney Museum downtown on it's Gansevoort Street, at the bottom of Chelsea on the west side. Oh, here are the curators here. That's Elizabeth Sussman and Jay Sanders. Well, we're going to start out here on the fourth floor and uh, we had to go on the spy cam because this area is closed to photography. Now, as I believe it, this is a performance and I think the entire schedule is run by Sarah Mitchelson. This piece, I'm not sure exactly how much of it is performance and how much of it is maintenance, but I guess if it's in a museum. It's art. I like the lady dust mopping the floors. There's the no photography sign. And there's a dancer, performer with a horse's head mask on that's kind of walking around the space here. Now I have to apologize, I was late, I had a dental appointment, so I got here about uh, 40 minutes before closing. And uh, normally I would have a little more time to run around and um, do a better job of reporting, but today I'm, I'm just doing a cursory run through and hitting a few high points. And I'm sorry, I apologize if I mispronounce people's names, mislabels. The labeling was terrible this year. but. Uh, Anyway, this is probably one of the most uh, impressive parts of the show, this large performance area. It takes up about uh, three quarters of the fourth floor. So we've got a bunch of ladies doing makeup here. Excuse me, could you tell me what the name of the piece is? American Cancer? American Cancer? Oh, Dancer. <laughs> And who's the artist? Thank you. I guess maybe they're going to go and dance too. Well, supposedly a lot of this is still close to photography. But look at this piece by Michael Smith. This is a shirt and slide projections. Got this glove with other straps on it, and a ball of something that looks like uh, it's made out of oatmeal. Well, this piece is by a whole collective of artists. I don't have time to read all the names. It's here in its own little chamber. Uh, I came in here late, so uh, there really is a limited amount of time that I'm going to have to run through here. A good little snippet of some of this video. Yeah, I think it's soon. I'm going to watch. I'm going to yeah, watch. I'm so yeah. But that was when they asked you about it for the first time, it was me and another friend. I met her in MacArthur Park. Then I remember she came and told me, "Oh." <laughs> Do you know what the title of this piece is? Oh, uh, it's called Green Room. Green Room. Yeah. Is this your piece? It is my piece. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did I see some of your work down at the new museum too? You did, that's correct. All right. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> Thanks. And who are you? James Calm with the James Calm Report. <laughs> Thank you. The green room. Well, we're here on the third floor. Oh, this is Christian Vervos Faum, Village Voice Reporter. Well, you know, the uh, Winnie Biennial is always changing, but there is one thing that does not change about it, and that is that uh, 
is constantly referred to as the show you will love to hate. So I've been in town for maybe 15 or 16 of these shows and they always seem to piss people off. But uh, in certain ways that kind of uh, is a measure of their influence, at least in the art community. It's a bunch of work by Nicole Eisenman. Now, we covered, I think, her last show down at Leo Koenig a couple of years ago. And uh, probably one of the few painters in the show. These look like mono prints, maybe. Uh, kind of like that. I guess this installation is by Luther Price and it's titled Handmade Slides. I don't know, the, the wall labels are kind of confusing here. I think this kind of uh, gets to the abject aesthetic that uh, a lot of people are using these days. Packing blankets, maybe. Oh, there's Linda Yablonski from the Art Forum. Like Tom Thayer, I guess. Got some uh, assemblages. Looks like on board. Got some sculpture. Birds. Marionette. So this is all part of the Tom Thayer installation here. Let's see what they got here in the little cubby hole. Oh, that's kind of nice. We've got uh, collage scuzzy fabric on like corrugated cardboard. interesting. We've got uh, somebody doing paintings here and uh, kind of getting creative with the installation here. They've got sheets of plate glass that they've got them mounted on. This is by Judah Koiter. And looks like oil on canvas. And then uh, I want 10 by 5 foot plates of plate glass behind there. Well, this is probably for you painting fans, probably one of the highlights of the show because uh, just giving the uh, artist list a cursory glance, I think they had about five painters out of 50 artists. Well, here we've got another installation piece. This is by Don Casper. Well, so now we've seen about five of these installation pieces. This is a little more abject. So we've got drawings, collages, photography, video, more packing blankets. I was speaking to another critic as I was walking up the stairs and I asked him what he thought and he said, uh, he was too depressed to discuss it. Excuse me. Uh, I don't think it's that bad. Hi. How's it going? Are you the artist? Yes, my name's Don Casper. Don Casper. Yeah, nice to meet you. What do you call the installation here? Uh, this piece is a, a, a durational performance called This Could Be Something If I Let It. Uh, How long is the duration for? 
It's a three month durational performance. You're going to be here all day, all night, 24 hours a day for three months? Actually, I, I'm assuming studio hours uh, from 11 to 6. And um, Should I run out and get you a sandwich? <laughs> yes, please. And then on Fridays from 1 to 9. But I have Mondays and Tuesdays off when the museum is closed. I was like, but, that's when the real mischief would be happening. Yeah, I agree. Congratulations, but, Don. Thank you so much. What's your name? James Calm of the Calm Report. Oh, cool. Nice to meet you, James. Are you an LA artist? I am. That is correct. So, Hi. this is by Elaine Rychek. Looks like we've got a big needlepoint work here. Cameron Crawford. Six, 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 six. Not moving seagulls. Okay, so we've got kind of this frame holding up uh, this plastic mesh. Oh, this is an impressive, uh, I guess I would call this a tapestry. Paint me a canvas way sure. This is also by Ellen Rychek. I think this is based on a Veronese painting. Oh, this is all hand done. I kind of like uh, Elaine's stuff. I'll keep moving on here. Let's bet your. Okay, well painting fans, this is one of the reasons I came by here. So this is Andrew Masulo. And uh, geez, they've got a whole huge installation of his works here. Now, Andrew is one of our uh, painting heroes and the thing I love about him is, uh, well, he does a lot of small work, but he's constantly uh, of shifting his designs, his style, but he always sticks with his punchy colors. Oh, I saw that in a show here. I guess that was a feature about, I don't know, a year ago? And uh, I think Andrew lives out in San Francisco. And uh, he's also represented by the same guy that represents me out in Los Angeles, Daniel Weinberg. Oh, I love this stuff. Well, kind of fun the way he uh, textures certain parts of this and leaves the other parts totally flat. Ooh. I like that yellow. Okay, this piece is by Cameron Crawford and it's called Making Water Storage Revolution, Making Water Storage Revolution. I'd say this piece is probably about 20 feet long. Kind of a light wooden frame and uh, it's like muslin curtains, tenting. by Liz Desherenis. Twin Silver Tone Gelatin Silver Prince. Well, I was looking at that and thinking that uh, this was somebody biting a Don Judd piece, but I would be wrong. I guess this is photography. Well, this is also by Liz Deshenez. And it's also a gelatin and silver print. So, although it looks like minimal sculpture, this is actually 
some kind of photographic process or at least using those materials. Well, the other thing I was going to say is this has got to go down as maybe the worst <laughs> labeling job I've ever seen of the Whitney. There's some interesting sculpture pieces and I think I've seen this guy's work downtown, maybe at Matthew Marks. Yeah, and these are some painted sculptures by Vincent Facto. Well, this is very frustrating, but um, we've got an installation here on this entranceway. This is all sewn fabric. And then they've got some photographs that they're hanging here. Well, we're going to have to move through this pretty fast because it's coming up to 4.30 when they're going to close the press preview. So this is the second floor. This is some work by LaToya Ruby Frazier. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw her in uh, maybe the Greater New York show a couple of years ago. more Latoya. Uh, here again we've got some uh, paintings that are mounted on this loosely woven fabric backing by Kaya Althoff. Kind of a fun sculpture. It gives the idea of Looks like it's made from old uh, fabric, maybe some old upholstery or something. Makes me think of a Louise Bourgeois. I think one of the current uh, critiques of the Whitney Biennial is that. Uh, Get a little too caught up in the the fashionable, the trendy, the politically correct, and uh, I think the other thing that uh, this is by Leonard Petlier, titled "Horse Nation." Oh, that's pretty kitschy. I think one of the other points that was always pointed out to me when I was a young student was. Uh, Although it's a great achievement to get into the Whitney Biennial, all you have to do is pick out a catalog from the Biennial about 10 years ago or 12 years ago and see how many of these names you recognize. This is some collages by Richard Hawkins. It's like Arn Frainer. Du Buffet. Well, we've got some little tiny sculptures on shelves by Matt Hoyt. Heresy of the Soul. Werner Herzog. Of works are by K. 
K8 Hardy. And uh, you get photographs with the uh, assemblage. Oh. A lot of these are about shoes, which is a good Warhol thing. Oh, they're going to close us down. There's Walter Robinson <laughs> hiding behind the work. So I should run downstairs. Can I run in there? Thank you, sir. Now this is by Oscar Toison. And we've got some very heavy beams of wood. I beam structures, plate glass. Looks like silicone caulking. This takes up the whole uh, lobby gallery space here. Oh, maybe I can come in and take a shower. Well, this has been James Com coming to you from the 2012 iteration of the Whitney Biennial. Are we gonna kick me out? Okay. Closing time. Thank you. And thank you, Kate.